Beloved, the first step to divine turnaround, the first step to blessings and fulfillment of destiny, the first step to the manifestation of greatness in life is exposure. But that exposure, the first part of it is exposure to that glory of God. Before your life can take the turn you expect to see, there will be an impartation that happens through the being exposed to the glory of God. Because we are human and highly limited in every way, before God can use any one of us to do mighty great things, there must be a download that comes from heaven. And that download is the download of his glory. Every person in scripture that God ever used, he first exposed to his glory, his word, and his power. God is deliberate about this. And all these different experiences, all these different accounts of visitations by God before that person ever became anybody was what activated that which was latent inside them and they began to move forward. Take for instance the prophet Ezekiel. Before prophet Ezekiel was ever sent as a prophet to the people of Israel, God first and foremost exposed him to his word and his glory. Ezekiel chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Ezekiel was a priest, the son of Buzi, who lived with the Jewish exiles beside the Chiba Canal in Babylon. One day late in June, when I was 30 years old, the heavens were suddenly opened to me and I saw visions from God. He was an ordinary man doing ordinary things. But a day came when God wanted to use that ordinary man for extraordinary. Listen to me. The difference between one great man and one small man is the extra attached to the life of the other one. And that extra is the glory that God downloads. Don't discount that visitation. Do not discount, discount that touch. Do not discount what happens when the glory of God is exposed to a man. When God exposes his glory to a man or a woman, you begin to bat things that you were originally incapable of batting. Samuel was a prophet. Born to be a prophet. But not Anywhere did the Bible tell us that he became a prophet before the glory was revealed. As a little child planted in the right place, why did Hannah bring her only child and leave him alone with strangers in a strange place? Why did Hannah want a son so bad? And after the son came, she gave him up immediately. She knew that there was something that can happen at the temple that was not able to happen in her own house. She wanted her son exposed to some things other children are not going to be exposed to so that her children can do that which she promised God. If you give me this child, I will give him to you to use. And one day, that glory was revealed. First, God called four times. It was at the fourth time, under the tutelage of Eli, Samuel says, speak, for your servant is listening. When that connection was made, a word entered his ears. And from that day, he became a man different from other men. Beloved, it is the glory of God and exposure to it that transformed a non-entity, that transforms a helpless, hopeless person to becoming a vessel in the hand of the Lord. It was exposure to the glory of God that changes the lives of so many that we read about in scripture. 
What about Moses? A runaway murderer. Hiding out in the backs of the desert. Making sure no one finds out who he was. But one day God sought him out in the wilderness. God didn't just say send a letter or an email. God didn't just send a board to come and drop the news to him. God drew him to a lonely place. God drew him to a place where they both could be alone. And when he was right there on the mountain with sheep that belonged to his father-in-law, the glory of God appeared. Beloved, it was after that encounter that Moses became a man that the world talks about today. Exodus chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. One day as Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, out at the edge of the desert near Horeb, the mountain of God, suddenly, somebody say suddenly, the angel of Jehovah appeared to him as a flame of fire glory in a bush. When Moses saw that the bush was on fire and that it didn't burn, he went over to investigate. Beloved, when the glory appears, the glory will magnetize you. When the glory appears, the glory will attract you. When the glory appears, you cannot look away or move away. You will be drawn to the glory. Listen to me, beloved. Many times we say, when I found God, we say it wrong. No man wants God. No woman looks for God. God seeks us out. God makes us do whatever he wants us to do. Listen to me. It's better you say yes. Because you lack the capacity to say no. That's the thing with mistake. I can ask mama something and mama will say no, I will not do it. God asks and gets what he asks for. He doesn't ask and you say I wouldn't do. If you say you wouldn't do, the one you think you can do, God will make sure you never do that one. Even death will be too far away to take you when God wants something with you. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no man or woman born or have lived and died that can ever say to God, I don't want it. I will not do it. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. He was high and mighty. And when God wanted to show him who was God, he made him live in the forest for seven years. Turned him to half animal, half man had him eat grass and live out in the rain for seven years and one day God said I think he got it now God brought back his senses he said now I know I thought I was in charge but there is one greater than I that is in charge and God said I will again restore you on the throne so you can tell them the story of who makes kings kings I don't know who I'm communicating to this morning, but I want you to know that he does not matter where you are now or how in a mess you are now or how bad things are now. When the glory of God appears, things will turn around in such a way that those that wrote you off do not have a chance and will not have a chance than to come before you and bow. God said to Moses, I know they're after you. I know they want to kill you. I know you are supposed to stand for the crime you committed. But I'm not looking for a man with no issues. If I found a man that never killed a person before, then he's qualified for the job. But the truth is, I'm not looking to use anybody that haven't made a mistake. As a matter of fact, I could have found a womanizer if I wanted I could have found a liar. I could have found one that stole a few dollars. But I wanted the worst of the worst. I wanted a man that killed another man. So that when you stand before the man that is haunting you, he will know that of a truth, he could only be two things, madness or God, that brought you back. Did you get it? 
He could only be two things. Is it that you are mad and forgot what you did and you've come to die? Or for real, there's a God there that is behind you. And when Moses, after arguing for a long time, he couldn't argue himself out from the glory. When he appeared before the Pharaoh of Egypt, from the first day to the day, Pharaoh said, take your people and leave my land. Pharaoh could testify that of a truth. Moses wasn't an ordinary man. I am speaking to someone here. The difference between your today and your tomorrow is the glory of God. The difference between what you have done and the things you are going to do in the future is the glory of God. I don't know who you are. How bad do you want the glory? I want you to know that the exposure to the glory of God will wipe clean the slate that was against you. Exposure to the glory of God will make a non-entity somebody. Exposure to the glory of God will bring you back from non-entity, from mediocrity, from being a nobody, from being in the back, from being a failure to being the one. Who here wants to be the one? Rise up and pray. My father, expose me to your glory. My father, Expose me to your glory. For in Jesus, my name we pray. Pray that, O oh Lord of glory, expose my family to your glory. Expose my family to your glory. For in Jesus mighty name we pray. You may be seated. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for your help. Beloved, if you know the amount of people that want to travel overseas, if you know the amount of people that want to be where you are now, if you know the amount of people that wish they can crawl into the engine of an aircraft, which many have tried, crawled into the garbage, uh, sorry, baggage area, and some of them ended up dead. But why did those that entered the plane and came here or wherever they wanted to go. How did they make it? They entered the plane with the access that the visa they had on their passport granted them. Beloved, there's 8 billion people on the face of the earth. The visa to greatness, the visa to being the one, the visa to fulfillment of destiny. The visa to turn around in every area of your life is the glory of God. It is the glory of God that will overhaul, that will reorder. It is the glory of God that will make time wasted be like nothing. It is the glory of God that will make someone that wiped out rise up again and become useful. Why does God do this? Why do God expose men to his glory first before he can use them? Why does God speak to women first? Why does he expose them to his glory first before he can use them? Because let me tell you, beloved, unless God appears with his glory, you will never be sure that it is God. Because the only difference between man and God is glory. Unless God appears in glory and speaks to a man or a woman, what that does is an assurance that I am not mad, though I think I am. I am not crazy, though I think I am. Everyone around me believes that I am doing the wrong thing, though I know that I'm not. But no one believes me. How can a murderer come and say I'm a man of God sent by the Lord? Beloved, now it will make sense to you why Moses asked the question, 
who will I say sent me? How can a murderer that hasn't stood charges appear and say, I'm a man of God? Then when God said, tell them that I am, that I am sent you, <laughs> Moses said, you just said it here in the wilderness. None of them are here. And I've proven before that I kill people. And murdering and lying go together. And now I will go now and tell them that I, the murderer, is telling the truth. Moses said, what if they don't believe me? Because they wouldn't believe me. That's when God did the third thing. I told you. Before God uses anyone to do great things, he shows you his glory, he speaks to you, and he shows you his power. That's when God said, what do you have in your hand? Moses said, it's a stick. Even this one I borrowed from my father-in-law. That was what he was using when he was taking care of the sheep himself. God said, I know. Don't go into detail. God said, throw it down. Moses threw it down. Imagine what Moses expected to see. I can tell you, not any miracle. I can tell you, that stick he was holding, there is no way or no day he ever thought that stick had any living thing inside it. But I want you to know that that snake didn't come from heaven. That snake was already in the stick. All the while that he had the stick, that stick was a miraculous stick. But unless the glory of God was in the arena, the wonder and the miracle will not come out of dead things. Who am I talking to? When he said to Moses, throw it down, Moses actually, that's where it belongs. On the ground, dead. And the next thing Moses saw was a large snake looking at him. He blinked his eye blinked again. He wanted to know if the snake and the stick were standing at the same place. But he saw that it was the stick that became a snake. What did Moses do? He ran. You know the problem we have today? Many people talk about the call of God as if the call of God is anything pleasant. The call of God, everyone God ever called in this book was saying, I don't want. Don't send me. I don't want to go. Send another person. The reason God sends his glory is to, he knows who we are and he knows that the assignment is tough. He knows that the enemies are plenty and when he sends his glory and sends his word and gives you a sign, you can enter the mouth of the grave knowing that I am here on assignment. When God sends his glory, what does he do? He comes down to your level so small to meet with you and assure you about his presence. When the glory of God appears to a person, that same glory follows the person wherever he's going. God does that. When God sends you his glory, it is a guarantee that the one who is sending you is able. When God sends you his glory, he's teaching you to trust him. What I'm showing you, I've not shown to many people. What I'm telling you, not many people have heard. I chose you, not because of who you are, but can I tell you something? Now I know why God chooses bad people. Because bad people are looking for a second chance. Didn't the Bible say our God is a God of many chances? Good people don't look for chance. Why do I need God? What is he going to do for me? I have a wife. My marriage is working. I have children. I'm not sick. I have money. I am rich. I am connected. What will God do for me? But God is looking for killers, for liars, for adulterers, for fornicators, for those that have gone to a place of no return. They thought no one could help or save them. When the glory of God appears, a bad man becomes useful in the hand of God. And guess what happens? Though there is grace. But these men and women are always deliberate not to mess up again. They are 
always deliberate. Lord, don't make me mess up. Lord, help me. Watch over me. I want to do this one right. That's what happened to Moses. And Moses appeared and left for Pharaoh. And he got there, stood before Pharaoh with the power of the Most High God behind him. I am speaking to people that after this meeting, after this service, you will never be the down and out again. You will never be the wiped out again. You will never be the rejected again. I am speaking to someone. They look at you and they think you can't make it. You are right now in a desert place. Everyone has abandoned you. But listen to me. I am glad they abandoned you. That God may move in. I am glad they left you. That God may pick you up. I am glad they ran away. Because God and grace is running to you. Get ready for your new season. And that new season is coming because of exposure to the glory of God. To the word of God. And to the power of God. Beloved, we are we are stars. We are celebrities. We are a chosen generation. We are a people of wonder. We are people of potential and capacity. Beloved, never you look down on yourself. He may not be what you expect right now. But I want you to know that what you are expecting is already in you right now. And when the glory of God falls upon you, as it is falling upon you now, as it is falling upon you in this season, you will become the man. You will become the woman. You will become a voice. You will become the voice. You will be discovered. Rise up on your feet. Woo! Glory be to God. Weeping men endure for a night. Ah, ha, ha, ha. But joy. Somebody say, but joy. Come at when? In the morning. Beloved, you are in the morning. You are in the morning. You are in the morning of his presence. You are in the sanctuary. You are in the presence of the most high God. You are in the presence of majesty. Joy has come. Never again shall they call you rejected. Never again shall they call you abandoned. For a while you have been an uncompleted project. But God is completing you now. I don't know who that person is. One person here right now. You have been an uncompleted project. But God said to tell you, I am completing you now. Because my glory has come down here. Someone, they wrote you off a long time ago. They said every other person can amount to it, but not you. They say you messed up too much. You can't recover. God say, I am the God of the mess ups. I am the God of the messed up. I am the God of a new beginning. Somebody is beginning afresh. Amen. But guess the important thing. With God, there's no time lost. Amen. That's the beauty of God. With God, there is no time. Beloved, forget about measuring yourself with anyone. Forget about thinking they've gone ahead of you. I want you to know that you will rule them one day. I want you to know that you will be their boss one day. I want you to know you will be the God to person one day. And this God I preach will do it. For the glory of his name. Somebody say thank you Lord.